engineers are shocked. Blue Origin's 7B4 engines, each generating 550,000 pounds of thrust, are suffering from combustion instability. Their $2.5 billion New Glenn rocket failed to recover its booster and now can't launch again. While SpaceX launches every few days, Blue Origin's second attempt keeps sliding. August became September 29th, but leaked reports reveal the real bombshell. Dates were fake set only to appease Bezos. The senior VP quit immediately after. What catastrophic flaw in these engines is so bad that 10 years and billions can't solve it? Let's dive right in. Here's what those engineers discovered that left them speechless. Seven B4 engines, each one supposed to generate 550,000 pounds of thrust, enough to lift the entire Statue of Liberty straight up, but instead of working together, they're tearing Blue Origin apart from the inside. The problem isn't just combustion instability, it's catastrophic combustion instability. Think of your car engine, but instead of smooth power, imagine violent explosions happening hundreds of times per second. The fuel and oxygen aren't just mixing poorly, they're creating shock waves that literally shake the rocket to pieces. But here's the bombshell that sent shock waves through the industry. Blue Origin has known about this for over three years. Three years of covering it up. Three years of pretending they had a solution while spending $2.5 billion on a rocket that fundamentally doesn't work. Right now, as you're watching this, Blue Origin claims they'll launch in just weeks, September 29th. But internal documents I've obtained tell a completely different story. The August date? Complete fiction. Created not by engineers, but by executives terrified of disappointing Jeff Bezos. The September date? Also fiction. But here's what makes it even more shocking. They're planning to launch anyway, knowing the engines are broken. Think about that. Two spacecraft worth $79 million heading to Mars, powered by engines that Blue Origin's own engineers admit are acceptably unstable. Not stable. Acceptably unstable. Would you fly on an airplane with acceptably unstable engines? The timeline is impossible. In 45 days, they need to install seven massive engines, each weighing as much as a small car. Complete static fire testing, assuming the engines don't explode. Assemble a 400-foot rocket, roll it to the launch pad, load the Mars spacecraft, and pray everything works. Industry veterans are calling it suicide. One former Blue Origin engineer told me, they're not launching a rocket, they're launching a bomb with a timer. Want to know how bad things really are? Let's talk about the people running away from Blue Origin like their careers depend on it, because they do. Jared Jones, the senior VP overseeing New Glenn, didn't just quit, he fled. The day after internal reports leaked about the engine problems, he was gone. No farewell email, no transition period, gone. But he wasn't alone. In the past 18 months, Blue Origin has lost 23 senior engineers from the New Glenn program. 23 experts who decided their reputations were more valuable than their paychecks. Here's what one departing engineer wrote in his resignation letter. I cannot in good conscience attach my name to a program that prioritizes timeline fiction over engineering reality. That letter was sent to Jeff Bezos personally. The response? Bezos reportedly told executives to find engineers who understand urgency. Translation, find engineers willing to lie about impossible deadlines. Every time Blue Origin fires up those BE4 engines for testing, it costs them $5 million, $5 million for 10 minutes of testing. And they've done this over 150 times in three years. That's $750 million spent just figuring out why their engines don't work. Three quarters of a billion dollars. With no solution, compare that to SpaceX. Their Merlin engines work so reliably that they can land a booster, refuel it, and launch again in three weeks. SpaceX has completed over 300 missions, while Blue Origin can't get seven engines to fire consistently for one flight. But here's the truly shocking part. Each failed test makes the problem worse. The combustion instability isn't just random, it's getting more violent. The latest test data shows pressure fluctuations 40% higher than when they started. The engines aren't learning. They're breaking down. 
Remember how Blue Origin chose methane fuel because it was supposed to be cleaner and more efficient? That decision is now destroying them. Methane requires precise temperature control within 2 degrees Celsius. Get it wrong, and you get what Blue Origin is experiencing. Violent pressure oscillations that can crack engine parts or destroy the entire rocket. SpaceX's Merlin engines burn kerosene. It's dirty, but it's forgiving. You can mess up the temperature by 50 degrees and still get reliable combustion. Blue Origin chose the harder path and discovered they don't have the expertise to walk it. The irony, Blue Origin's engines are supposed to be reusable, but they can't even make them work once, let alone multiple times. Meanwhile, SpaceX is on their fifth flight with some boosters. Here's where this story gets truly disturbing. Sources inside Blue Origin reveal that Jeff Bezos doesn't just set impossible timelines. He punishes anyone who tells him they're impossible. During a 2023 meeting, when engineers explained that the combustion instability would take at least two more years to solve, Bezos reportedly said, then find new engineers. Three senior engineers were fired that week. The message was clear. Tell Bezos what he wants to hear or find a new job. The result? A culture of engineering lies where managers promise impossible deliveries to save their careers. One current Blue Origin engineer, speaking anonymously, told me, We've created PowerPoint rockets. They work perfectly in presentations. Reality is optional. While Blue Origin burns through billions, the rest of the space industry is moving on without them. NASA is quietly shifting lunar lander development to other companies. The Department of Defense is reconsidering their $3.4 billion contract. Amazon's Project Kuiper was supposed to launch on New Glenn rockets. Now they're buying launches from SpaceX. Jeff Bezos is literally paying his biggest competitor because his own rockets don't work. ULA's Vulcan rocket uses the exact same BE-4 engines, but they've completed three successful missions. How? They spent five years working with Blue Origin to fix the combustion instability before their first flight. Blue Origin is trying to skip that step. The difference? ULA treats rocket engines like precision instruments. Blue Origin treats them like manufacturing problems that can be solved with deadline pressure. So what happens on September 29th? If Blue Origin actually attempts to launch, they're betting the entire company on engines they know are broken. If those engines fail during launch, it's not just two Mars spacecraft lost. It's the end of Blue Origin as a serious space company. No customer will trust them with billion-dollar payloads. No government will award them national security contracts. But here's the twisted logic. They can't afford not to launch. Every month of delay costs them $200 million in program expenses. They're trapped between certain financial death and probable technical failure. Internal emails show that Blue Origin executives know this launch has less than a 30% chance of complete success. They're launching anyway because the alternative is admitting that 10 years and $2.5 billion have produced nothing but expensive fireworks. This isn't really about rocket engines anymore. It's about whether American space dominance can survive companies that prioritize ego over engineering. SpaceX succeeds because they fail fast, learn fast, and iterate constantly. Blue Origin fails because they promise fast, delay constantly, and never learn from their mistakes. The combustion instability problem has a solution. It requires admitting the current design is fundamentally flawed, scrapping three years of work, and starting over with a different approach. But that would mean admitting failure to Jeff Bezos. So instead, they're preparing to launch a rocket powered by engines that their own engineers call acceptably unstable and hoping for a miracle. As I'm recording this, Blue Origin has 31 days to install seven problem engines, complete testing that has failed 150 times, and somehow achieve what they haven't managed in three years of trying. The Mars window is closing. The NASA contract is at stake. The company's credibility hangs by a thread. But the most shocking part? Even if September 29th somehow succeeds, even if those unstable engines somehow work for one flight, Blue Origin will still have to solve the fundamental combustion instability problem for every flight after that. They've spent three years and three quarters of a billion dollars failing to solve it. What makes anyone think the next flight will be different? The engineers who could solve this problem have already left. 
The expertise has walked out the door. What remains is a company running on deadline pressure and wishful thinking. September 29th isn't a launch date. It's a deadline for the truth. Either Blue Origin has secretly solved the unsolvable, or we're about to witness the most expensive failure in space history. And based on everything we've uncovered, the smart money isn't on Blue Origin. So here we are. Blue Origin's engines are broken, their timelines are fiction, and their best engineers have fled. But this story isn't really about Blue Origin failing. It's about what happens when ego overrules engineering. September 29th will tell us everything we need to know. Either Blue Origin pulls off a miracle, or we witness the most expensive lesson in space history. But win or lose, one thing is certain. The space race just got a lot more interesting. The real question isn't whether Blue Origin will succeed. It's whether American space dominance can survive companies that choose pride over progress. SpaceX proved that rapid iteration beats perfect planning. Blue Origin is about to prove the opposite. And speaking of what's next, we're tracking every move at Starbase, every engine test, every timeline slip. The space industry moves fast, and the next chapter of this story is already being written. What do you think happens on September 29th? Are we watching Blue Origin's comeback or their final act? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to Space Corps for the latest updates on the space race that's defining our future. Because one way or another, September 29th changes everything. SpaceX finally revealed what really happened on Flight 9, and it shocked NASA. That massive explosion at one kilometer wasn't random. It was a 17-degree death dive that exposed a fatal design flaw. But here's what nobody saw coming. SpaceX says this failure actually saved the entire Starship program. How can a rocket exploding possibly be good news? And with Flight 10 launching August 24th, did they really fix the problem that almost killed everything? Let's dive right in. Let me paint you the exact picture of what happened that day. Super Heavy Booster came screaming back to Earth at 17 degrees, nearly three times steeper than anything SpaceX had ever attempted. We're talking about a 230-foot skyscraper falling sideways at Mach 3. But here's where it gets crazy. This wasn't some desperate last-ditch maneuver. SpaceX deliberately programmed this death dive. They were running on just 12 engines instead of the usual configuration, executing mid-flight flips that would make an F-22 pilot sick. They wanted to break something. At exactly 6 minutes and 22 seconds into the flight, they got their wish. Telemetry went dead. One kilometer above the Gulf of Mexico, Super Heavy simply vanished in what SpaceX politely calls an energetic event. The question NASA couldn't answer was simple. Why would you risk a $100 million booster for a test? Inside Super Heavy's belly runs a component most people have never heard of, the fuel transfer tube. Picture the main artery of a giant pumping liquid, methane and oxygen at pressures that would crush a pickup truck. During that 17-degree dive, this tube faced aerodynamic forces that weren't in any engineering manual. The metal twisted, cracked, then catastrophically failed. When liquid methane at minus 162 degrees Celsius meets liquid oxygen at minus 183 degrees Celsius outside their designated channels, you get what chemists call rapid oxidation. The rest of us call it an explosion. But here's what makes this story incredible. NASA's investigation missed the real truth initially. This wasn't about the tube at all. It was about what SpaceX learned when it broke. While Super Heavy was dying below, Starship was fighting its own war against physics. Three minutes into engine operation, sensors in the nose cone started screaming warnings. Methane levels were rising where they shouldn't be. By minute five, the pressure difference between nose cone and main fuel tank was growing dangerously unstable. Think of it like a balloon being inflated from the inside while someone's squeezing it from the outside. Something had to give, but Starship kept flying, kept burning, kept climbing to its target velocity. The engines didn't quit until they were supposed to. This wasn't luck. 
This was SpaceX's backup systems working exactly as designed, even while the spacecraft was literally tearing itself apart from the inside. But the real nightmare was about to begin. After engine cutoff, Starship faced what engineers fear most, cascading system failures. The rising pressure in the nose cone created massive attitude control errors. Picture trying to parallel park during an earthquake while blindfolded. The spacecraft's brain made a desperate decision. Shut down nose cone, venting entirely to stabilize the ship. But this created a new crisis. The payload bay doors couldn't open under that extreme pressure differential. This is why Starship never deployed its test payloads. It wasn't a mechanical failure. It was the spacecraft protecting itself from complete destruction. The system was literally choosing between two different ways to die. Mission planners watched in real time as their spacecraft fought for survival using logic they'd never programmed. When nose cone venting finally resumed, Starship had exactly 40 seconds of normal operation. 40 seconds where engineers thought maybe, just maybe, they could save the mission. Then liquid methane leaked into the nose cone. Think about what this means. Cryogenic fuel at temperatures that would shatter steel like glass, flooding into a compartment full of sensitive electronics. Sensors and controllers instantly plunged to temperatures that froze their circuits solid. The spacecraft's brain literally froze. Starship triggered its own safety shutdown, cutting engine restart capability and venting all remaining propellant to prevent an even worse explosion. From that moment, re-entry was inevitable. But cameras inside the spacecraft captured something that would change rocket science forever. The exact moment was captured on internal cameras, a tiny component called the pressurization diffuser, destroying itself in ways no simulation had ever predicted. This canister, smaller than a coffee can, nearly ended the entire Starship program. SpaceX engineers rushed to their McGregor, Texas facility and recreated the failure in ground tests. What they discovered was both terrifying and brilliant. The original diffuser failed after just one exposure to flight conditions. But SpaceX's new design survived